to open it too. Okay. okay, hello folks, welcome back to the F word. And this is like a new supercharger F word. I'm really excited because I'm no longer alone. Yay. <laughs> I've got the amazing Dr. Varsha Karana from India joining me. Thank you. And I've got the super Natasha Burns from the UK joining me as well. And I say from the UK because I'm no longer from the UK. So I'm set up in New Zealand. So we truly are like this massive global team of fertility homeopaths. And we are going to have a lot of fun while giving you some amazing kind of information and tips on how to manage your fertility as we as part of your fertility journey. Um, so I think a really good thing would be for everyone to kind of introduce themselves. I'm going to introduce myself once again because it's been a hell of a long time um, since my last podcast. So I'm Sutna um, Mataru, aka the Wild Homeopath. And I um, had my own fertility journey. I did have my first child through IVF. And that, in a really strange way, is what led me to a kind of homeopathy. And then it was almost like this natural, organic, weird step that put me into this position where I was like, well, actually, I'm going to marry homeopathy with fertility. And that's something that I really want to specialise in. Um, you've probably heard the first episode and you can hear my story there and somewhere along the line we'll just kind of stick that in um, but that's me and now I kind of work globally um, with clients from all over the world just helping people get pregnant which is um, really humbling and something I really love doing so I'm going to hand you over to Natasha to introduce herself um, so tell us a bit about you Hello, hi. So I I came to, um, I qualified as a homeopath in 2011, but didn't start my practice straight away. And in I was running an organic farm shop. And in 2017, I had a terrible, a car accident that was so ill in hospital. I was really, really ill and I couldn't get out of hospital. I had something called sweet to body dysfunction. I couldn't eat and I was very, very sick. And uh, in my trying to get better, I saw a, a fertility acupuncturist and I was just mesmerized with her work and how she, how she was helping couples fall pregnant. And uh, I went to her for treatment for myself and she was saying, Natasha, you need to get back to homeopathy. Uh, we need you. And I was like, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe I need to go back and start my practice finally. Um, and then, um, and other people say, come on, Natasha, you need to start your practice, get back to homeopathy. So I eventually did. And the passion for fertility has just grown and grown. One of my best friends had fertility issues. And I think that seeing her go through that was horrendous, um, being her support. And um, yeah, so I started doing allergies. When I started my practice, I started with allergies, hormones, and gut health because I knew I needed to build my practice and then I was just amazed how related all that was and then I started helping people fall pregnant who I didn't even know were struggling to get pregnant I thought now now's the time now's the time to start and I absolutely love it it's the most rewarding work and humbling as Sapna said and it's my absolute passion and uh, yeah that's it really so I will now hand you over to Asha Hi there, everyone. I uh, thank Sapna for this opportunity of doing this together as a team, uh, you know, practicing globally for infertility related issues. Uh, I do have a bit of a history there as well, uh, just like Sapna, that I suffered from um, recurrent miscarriages uh, when I was trying to conceive. So as Natasha said, I qualified uh, as a graduate. Uh, I'm a medically trained homeopath. I qualified in 2003. So it's been a really long time now. And I started my practice a long time back. But then at that time, my focus was not really just fertility. I was majorly into pediatric practice. Um, but this happened with me and I was under my mentor at that time. And obviously, uh, the first thing you do when you get pregnant um, you go to a gynecologist, uh, you know, and you just register yourself as all of you do as well. So I did the same and I started spotting, et cetera, et cetera. And it led to a miscarriage in spite of all of the efforts from the gynecologist's end. And 
uh, I could not carry to term. And then my mentor, who I, my homeopathic mentor, who was an 80 year old man, I, I mean, he came to know about this happening with me. So he gave me the confidence to work with him the next time I conceived. And uh, I don't know, I never looked back. I, I had a healthy pregnancy. I didn't have to take bed rest throughout my pregnancy as I was being told I might have to. Um, and I was with whom I was taking homeopathy throughout and I had a healthy baby boy. And uh, it was amazing. I mean, as a young homeopath at that time, it was something that, you know, it was something that amazed me that, you know, how it was so homeopathy was so amazing to complete this journey in such a healthy and joyful way. I feel like there was no stress of um, uh, hormone, hormones, injections or any strong medications really affecting your lifestyle, etc. And it was just this small pills and gentle pills that I was taking throughout my pregnancy and I could live a normal life and have a healthy baby at term. And this repeated itself when I was trying to have uh, my second child as well. So I had, again, I had another miscarriage. So this thing happening again and again with me somewhere told me that everybody should have this option. Why not? Why aren't people aware of this option? And looking at the numbers of fertility, infertility all over the world now, how exponentially they are rising. It just came to me that that is that is it. I want to do this, and I I got inspired to do this, and um, I've been trying to uh, work more since at least five to six years now on fertility related issues, and now we are a part of the team, and it's just wonderful to work with these two women, and they are just inspiring me every day to do more, to work hard, and to bring this knowledge to everybody. I just think it's about educating others about this option. I think that's our calling, all three of us. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, um, I just think I, I want to kind of just talk about a little bit about why, because we've, we've all kind of said, you know, we, we're homeopaths, we're into fertility. But I think it's really important to, for people to understand why homeopathy is different in fertility. And I think the first thing that people um, just don't make a connection is, that homeopathy can be used for fertility. Loads of people I know have been using homeopathy for years for acute, um, acute kind of circumstances. And then they think about eczema, they think about asthma, and they think about, you know, different chronic diseases. But infertility seems to be in its own little space, like mm -hmm. separate for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I think one of, you know, and you touched on this, Natasha, when you were saying, about doing the hormones and doing the um, skin, I think you said, and then the gut and how it's all connected. And this is the thing. And I think this is the crux of it when we're talking about infertility, because people always think that it's just in the womb space, you know, and they don't consider that it is this massive holistic thing that happens and it's systemic and it's not just about oh, my progesterone's a little bit low so the baby doesn't stick or I've got estrogen dominance. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to conceive. Um, there's a whole kind of thing going on in your entire system. And it's important for that to be recognized. And I think I can speak for all of us when we, you know, a massive part of consultations is an education of our clients to say, actually, let's just connect the dots. And, you know, I was I was in a consultation, not full fertility, but something related to kind of cycles and hormones. And I was speaking, you know, with this client and we were talking about how certain um, events in her life had then started another kind of um, started to kind of cascade further into what her current state was. And she said to me, I never made that connection. And I said, well, it's very important, that connection, but you mustn't berate yourself for this because we are not conditioned to make that connection. The way that modern medicine works is very, very fractured. So you've got your neurospecialist here, your gynae here, your obstetrician here. And those things don't kind of have a bridge in between them to connect dots. And the reason why I think homeopathy is so amazing in like general, but 
especially in fertility cases, is because what we do is we connect those dots and we can find this whole picture of what's systemically going on. And that's why it's such a successful form of treatment in infertility cases. Um, and, you know, on that, what I'm going to do is hand over and speak to Varsha, because Varsha is brilliant at this, the emotional element of um, homeopathy in infertility cases, um, because it's huge. So Varsha, let's, let's hear your expertise on this. It's, it's, it's mind boggling, actually, when you study in this way. And, you know, even as a homeopath, it is surprising sometimes when we, uh, you know, study the mind and when it is related to physical issues like infertility. A very, a very, a, a very good example that day came to me was this. I mean, I was in a consultation as well, uh, and I was speaking to this woman and she was not able to conceive for about uh, two, three years now they had been trying. And all of the all aside, the labs discussed, the physical symptoms discussed, everything was there in place. We had discussed that. But at the end of it, you know, she said to me that sometimes I think, what's the point of bringing a child into this world? You know, at this point, after COVID, after all of the global warming and all of this happening right now, is the world even a good place to bring a child in? And... Uh, the homeopaths, it was so important for me to be able to prescribe for her through that angle that, you know, that mental, emotional angle that she was in that space where she was feeling that it is not the right time to bring the child into this world because the world is not a right place for a child right now. So, you know, and when I told her that this, uh, that I'm thankful that you've spoken to me in detail about this because your leucoria, your menstrual cycle irregularity, your charting, your hormones, your labs, everything aside, and then your mindset aside. For a homeopath, the prescription has to be comprehensive. It has to include all of these things together. And it can't be just the emotional issues or it can't be just the physical issues for us. So even she was quite amazed that, you know, uh, really that's relevant. I was like, yes, it's extremely relevant what you're talking to me about. And it's going to change my prescription and affect it, uh, you know, to be able to help you in your journey. Um, and, you know, uh, another thing would be like some people are, they go into depression with fertility, you know. Well, grief, Asha. What about grief? I find that huge with fertility. Absolutely. And uh, the number of remedies we have to deal with that mm. the aurum and the mancinellas and the natrums and the staffs so it is it is I mean such a refined uh, understanding of the case that actually leads to a good prescription in homeopathy some people are just asking suggest remedies uh, what will help my ovulation give me a short a rare remedy give me a small remedy give me a tip basically you know in facebook groups this is happening so much and no matter how much you try to do that as a homeopath i feel the results are not going to be substantial because we are not we, we don't know the story of that person we don't know the entire uh, physical emotional mental state of that person and unless and until we do the prescriptions are not going to be effective oh, Asha, could you explain so more oh sorry so sorry, Asha, sorry. Varsha, could you explain more how that mental, emotional um, feelings, I mean, even the fear of if you were scared of getting pregnant in your early year, like some people are terrified of getting pregnant earlier in their life. Um, could you explain how that creates this block on fertility a bit more, Varsha? See, I feel that when we talk homeopathically, we are always looking at psychosomatic image of the entire case. Yeah. And everything for a homeopath is psychosomatic. Everything, be it asthma, allergy, or anything we are treating, we have to relate it to the psyche of the person, the psychology of the person, the stress, uh, their everyday stress, their lifestyle. We have to relate it to everything. So let's say there's a fear. It is definitely acting on the hypothalamic, uh, hypothalamus gland. And when the master gland, like hypothalamus is under stress, 
then what do you expect? The adrenals are going to be involved. The thyroid is going to be involved. All of those labs come into the picture. The hormonal imbalance comes into the picture. And it you can connect the dots there. And, you know, and then you can set the body right into balance. Because that is the aim of the treatment anyway. That's what we are aiming at, to create that delicate balance that's lost in the body somewhere. And I think you've made a really important point there, Varsha, because, do you know, a lot of the time when we talk about infertility or in general, that narrative is very much around hormonal imbalance. Yes. But when we speak in homeopathic terms and the way that we look at it, we're not looking at that level. We're looking at what's behind that. And we're talking about the root cause. Um, and, you know, if you're if you're dealing with that thing, that root cause, which underlies and underpins everything, and you're looking to heal that, then it is almost like a domino effect. If you're there kind of saying, you know, let's just give you some progesterone so that, you know, the, the implantation happens and your baby sticks, that's not actually dealing with what the problem is. You're trying to patch something up. And when you patch something up, you are not going to be as effective as if you actually get in, into it and underneath it all and try and fix that. So I think that's really important for people to start understand in, in context of give me a tip. And you know what? We all want to do that. We all want to say, you know what, just take this and go and get pregnant. Uh, it would just be beautiful. But yeah. it just doesn't it's work like that. And it can yeah. be quite frustrating, yeah. can't yeah. it? I'm sure. And, you know, I'm sure uh, Natasha would be a great uh, person to talk about this, that when we can, it's not just the stress of the person that we can address with homeopathy, but even the environment of the person, the medical history, the drug history of the person that needs to be addressed along with, because that also creates a block. So I think mm. I would invite Natasha to talk about, uh, you know, how uh, we can do that as well, along with the overall picture of the case. Natasha. Yeah. Hello. So I really do a lot of detoxing with my patients. Um, I take into the mind and everything as well, but Varsha, you're the expert on the mind, I must say, but that all comes into it. But I really, really love detoxing. I think it is so important. So my first question to my patients is always, probably a bit more physical than you've asked her I go actually I'm like what symptoms you currently are your worst and I'm looking for that is it your gut health is it fatigue is it is it um really heavy periods so I I'm kind of more physical actually where I go in um and then I'm, looking, I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm interrupting here you but yes, we to consider the physicals it's just that physicals people know that we need to consider emotional side people ignore people think it's yes not they fair. do that's why exactly I'm yeah so um so i look at the past and what medications people have had so this is going back to childhood people say i stopped taking the pill five years ago it doesn't matter mm -hmm. the pill yes has gone if you did a test there's no contraceptive pill in your body but in our lifetime, we only release a 50 P's worth of hormones. They're so tiny. And if you've taken years of the contraceptive pill, yes, the pill is gone, but that imbalance on the endocrine system remains, unfortunately. And you'll see that in your symptoms, like even anxiety and depression, you know, anything wrong with your periods on that contraceptive pill. If you've ever taken that includes morning after pill, depot shop, we're doing lots of research on that. Absolutely horrendous. Mm -hmm. That needs to go. Another, the massive thing for me is steroids, okay? Steroids, one asthma pump as a child. Now, people who say homeopathy doesn't work for me, I've tried it, I can guarantee their steroids. And even if a patient has forgotten they've had steroids, they've, I can see it now. I've got to a point I can absolutely see it. A patient will come back for their follow-up and we haven't had a result. Steroids are made of testosterone. If your man has ever had steroids and is suffering with any testosterone symptoms, we need to detox steroids. And I know you ladies will agree, steroids need to be detoxed first and people just don't realize the importance of mm. steroids. Absolutely. They literally create a block that the homeopathy can't get through. And the classic symptoms of this is fatigue. Like when we detox steroids, that's a major symptom I see is that this fatigue lifts that someone may have carried their whole life if they had steroids as a child. And then obviously, um, I won't, I'm not going to mention it because I don't want to put this, but the medical intervention that everybody's had over the last two years. Okay, you all know what I'm talking about. 
where I was talking about steroids being this top layer, that now actually is. And um, mm -hmm. I know we probably will do it slightly differently, but if somebody has had symptoms of that, I do a two month detox. And if somebody says, I'm absolutely fine, and it's about 50 50 actually, some people are absolutely fine and some people have had symptoms, then I do a quick 10 day detox. But my absolute go to is detoxing steroids antibiotics for the gut the gut is so linked to our hormones to estrogen production detoxing antibiotics will honestly in 90 percent of cases ibs will clear like it's incredible all these pharmaceuticals if we get these pharmaceuticals out our health just comes back and then we can go back to taking one remedy at a time and that more classical homeopathy that you know people talk about but all these things need to be taught so, so I am so passionate about detoxing um you know just a quick one for for sperm quality we detox steroids antibiotics rebalance testosterone and this guy's sperm quality morphology went from two to eight in six months and his sperm is now three times optimal so the results from detoxing are just amazing and they can bring fertility back quicker than you can think you may think it takes longer to go natural honestly it can be so so quick and uh heavy metals is another one which we're gonna all of these i think we've got plans to really talk about in depth but heavy metal detoxing is really 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 important for fertility for recurrent miscarriage detoxing heavy metals and yeah, I could talk about this for probably three episodes. I'm absolutely passionate about it. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's what I love with fertility and how quick it can bring your fertility back. Yeah. And we, we are going to talk about this in depth for three episodes. Yeah, we are. Yeah. To say that. But I'm going to nerd out here for one second. So sure. when we're talking about this kind of, when, when Natasha, you're talking about this kind of detoxing and these drug layers, it's not even a new concept you know I, I was reading like this book um and it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a bore but if you can get through it then you know you get some real gems but this book um by a homeopath called Vanier that was written in the 1950s and he talks about this he talks about this drug layer and we weren't like hardcore into the steroids or the antibiotics um maybe the pill you know but he talks about this toxicity and how you, if you don't remove that toxicity, then it's very difficult for the other homeopathic remedies to kind of act mm -hmm. as um, gently as they possibly can. And that means, you know, no crazy reaction and um, as fast as they possibly can. So this has been around, you know, in homeopathic literature for years. So it's not like this new thing because we've kind of, you know become this society of like heavy drug users <laughs> excuse the pun yeah. but you know but we users. have though haven't we but we have yeah um, but, but it's um this that how many drugs are going to be in our system by 2020s uh, you know 2022 2023 and where we are standing today the ivf uh, drug cocktail itself it's oh so terrible I mean, that's one yeah. uh, episode in itself and we will take it up. But what I'm just trying to say is where you were coming from, Sapna, in the 1950s when they were talking about it and when this um, learned homeopath was talking about it, at that time, they had a few remedies in their mind. Very mm. simple, few remedies only. But now it's a different scenario altogether. But at Hopefully. that time, it was like cortisone and... Um, uh, Aristolochia clematis remedies like that, right? That were used for in general for OCPs or even even a sulfur for mm. you know general detox uh, from everything. But now yeah. things are much more advanced, and we are detoxing layers of drugs separately. So that that wasn't where we were in the fifties, of course. Not no, at all. and it wasn't bad. And look, if they picked up on how bad it was back then in the 50s, when there definitely wasn't as much going on, where are we today? Yeah. And uh, let's uh, let's let's uh, not get into the environmental issues, please, because then my head will go off if we get into that. <laughs> just touching on the IVF, though, just if anyone's listening, IVF drugs also could be detoxed from homeopathy. Yes. Um, yeah. 
and it and I mean I would say most women struggle after IVF there's not uh, maybe one woman I've ever spoke to who came out of IVF feeling okay so just mm. to, um, let you know that can be we have beautiful remedies and I suppose just to explain we have remedies that are made of all the drugs so just to explain the contraceptive detox so it is made of about 20 brands of the contraceptive peel including the morning after pill including the depot shots including the marina coil and yes. it's just so gentle because we give that back over two months but what why is so good to go with a homeopath is because when a homeopath knows your whole case they will provide they will make that detox so gentle because all your support remedies will match your emotions your mental state your physical symptoms if you have period pain and it's just so gentle and so beautiful and you know it's just amazing what I say to my patients is I can guarantee in two you can never guarantee a baby this isn't this the hardest thing of this job my husband's an electrician I'm like when you quote for a job you know you're going to do it and that is the hardest thing for me but um we all have great success rates but um what's I going to say um but you can guarantee that after that two month detox, that woman is going to feel better. And as you start to yeah. feel better, the hope comes. You And the thing is with fertility, I think, is when you feel unwell, you know you're infertile, you don't feel right, right? And as your health yeah. starts to improve every month, um, the vitality comes back and you know your fertility is coming back. And that's what's so beautiful about watching someone go through homeopathic treatment. I'm yeah, sure yeah. you agree. Yeah. The spring, the spring and the step comes back. Yes, the, what I say to husbands is the glint in her eye will come back and yes. you'll see the fatigue lift. That's what I say, because you can yes. see it. The patient comes back after their first detox and you can see the glint in their eye coming back and the health and the vitality and the energy coming back. And it's, it's beautiful. And, fertility, and then the hope comes back because someone's starting to feel well. Yes. You know your fertility's come back. The hope comes back and a baby comes and it doesn't take long. So... Yeah, it's, it is beautiful work, isn't it? Yeah. I do love it. Yeah. It's been very satisfying. Uh, the kind of work yeah. we do, I think it's probably, it's really satisfying on a higher level, I feel sometimes. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it feels out, out of, yeah, you feel like you're doing very good work. Yeah, beautiful. Amazing. I mean, I think that homeopathy is um, a, a blueprint for life anyway. So, yeah. you know, and we're going to delve into that a lot more in um, the upcoming episodes. So um, I just want to say thank you to Natasha and Farsha for well, making this more enjoyable and being a team. And um, we just really look forward to kind of just doing this podcast and putting the word out there with everyone. So, um Thanks, folks. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Natasha and Varsha. And we'll see you next next time. Thank you, ladies. So, see you soon. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye-bye.